Greetings, and welcome to Etzheim's weekly podcast, recorded live in Richardson, Texas. We invite you now to join us for one of our synagogue's Shabbat messages. It's a privilege to be uh, in the synagogue the third time here in uh, Dallas. Uh, thank you for uh, welcoming me again. It's a privilege and it's an honor to be part of uh, the family of Etzheim as we are one in Christ, one in Messiah. He is our Savior. So we are together because we are a family. Amen? Amen. And uh, in my heart this morning, I would like to give you during uh, this time of uh, speak, give me grace. As you know, always I, I try to speak things that might be a little bit challenging for you. But the Lord is working in every community, in every home group, in every culture. The Lord is above culture. Jesus is above culture. And I just want to say that my name is Milad. Milad means birth. Khuri means priest. For those who doesn't know me, Khuri means priest. There are like 34 generations of priests in my family. Uh, as Arabic Christian, I'm a unique. And uh, I'm not Arab Muslim, okay? We love the Muslims, but I say that Arab Christian, that's mean there are Arab Christian and Arab Muslim. But I want to say that the Lord is doing awesome things in Israel, in the Palestinian community. Uh, one new man in the midst of the conflicts in the Middle East. I would like to start with this title. I said, Lord, what do you define the one new man in the atmosphere of conflicts in Israel and the Middle East, the Lord is calling us to be one in spite of all of the conflicts in the Middle East. I would like to start with really one of the major conflicts in the Middle East is the political conflict versus endless government of God. We are light for every government. His kingdom come, his will be done in every government. Nationalism can move away our focus from seeking God's kingdom in areas we think that God cannot access. God is unlimited in his government. His government is beyond borders. Sometimes in our mindset as believers, we think that God is working in this box, but the other box is not working yet because this is what is my mind think of. So the Lord is working beyond borders beyond boundaries. The Lord is working in Egypt. The Lord is working in Lebanon. The Lord is working in Iran. The Lord is working in every culture because He is God. He is beyond government. And I want to say that the Lord is stirring in my heart this morning from 1 Timothy 2.2 for kings and all those in authority that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. The Lord wants us to pray for every government in the Middle East. This is the challenge sometimes because of the conflicts. Sometimes we're drawn into praying for a specific government and not praying for the other governments. You see what I mean? And the Lord is God. He is beyond borders. You go to Egypt, you see a family of Christ. They're welcoming you. We're more hospitable. Sometime. <laughs> we, we love the Lord. So praying for all of the government and non-godly government also. Because there are people who are living under non-godly government. Like ISIS government. Like other, I don't want to name governments now. But <laughs> there are governments that is really non-godly. And God wants us to bless every government Family of God is government, is without boundaries. The family of God is the key to shift governments of the Middle East. We are called as believers to have a voice of a truth so we can let Messiah shine. Amen. So if you're going to go to another culture, another country, you want Jesus to shine. You want Yeshua, Yeshua to shine. Amen. I would like to share also these two pictures. Is basically, we were serving in a refugee place. 
we uh, go to uh, several places in the Middle East. This was in uh, near Turkey. And the Lord is doing awesome thing in this thing, in this area. We want to see Yeshua, Yeshua shining in every community. In Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of Jehovah of hosts will perform this. We pray that God's government will increase in every culture, in every community. Even in Gaza Strip, even in the West Bank area, even in Israel, even in Egypt, even in Lebanon, even in Jordan. This is God's heart, is to shine through his labors. God's endless government is the family. First, family care. Family stand with each other in conflicts. Family unite and support. One of the things that I can hear a person who is not united with his family is the one who is bringing division. How? This guy is blah, 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 and then the other guy did that, that, and we are just talking sometimes as believers against each other without knowing. And this will bring division. It's easy. So the Lord wants us to be in unity together. I'm not judging, but I'm just saying, in general, the believers sometimes, they don't know what they're talking about because of many ministries, global ministries. This ministry is good, that ministry is better, that ministry may be not good. But if we believe that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua Al-Masih, the Son of God, this is the true gospel. He is my family. She is my family. We care. We unite. We stand with each other in conflict and support. In 1 Timothy 5.8, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This verse is really important as believers. We're called to bless the believers in every country. We are called to bless every believer. Firstly, those who follow Jesus, those who follow Yeshua. Amen? Amen. I believe that you agree with me. Second conflict. Let's go to the second conflict. Religious conflict versus relationship with the Lord. Religious spirit relate into Jerusalem. Do you think that Jerusalem is without religious spirit? <laughs> I don't know about Washington, but the, this, Israel has lots of conflicts, but especially religious. Um, yes, political conflict, but religious spirit relate into Jerusalem, the replacement theology, and the pressure of the religious spirit in Jerusalem, and the victim mentality that I shared last time with you guys, that this area is facing. Religious can cause us to build walls with each other, but the relationship with the Lord doesn't allow us to open even walls with each other. To put walls that he is from different kinds of backgrounds. He's, we put people in boxes, and my, my hard desire in this time is to, to have a grace with each other that we don't have walls with each other because the relationship first with the Lord is important. And then the other thing will unite, be united. Like first starting with God. I know that you know, guys, but I'm just sharing this because it's so complicated our area in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is becoming many ministries, many global ministries, many people from different backgrounds comes into Jerusalem, but one of the things that is really needed is the family of Christ, family of Yeshua, Yeshua. First, Jewish been rejecting God and then their Messiah, persecuted crusaders, Holocaust to fight for their lives. Jews been fighting very much to until now. 
lots of fight. Palestinian Arab Christians been in the front line, and many left their homeland. There is limited jobs right now. There is lots of pressure. Limited jobs. Wondering about the future. Intimacy with the Lord can bring healing to our societies. This is the key, is to have the intimacy of the Lord. As the family of Messiah, when we are a family, we can preach the gospel in a powerful way. In First Corinthians, I have First Corinthians 9, 20, 22, 20. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. And in 22, to the weak, I became weak to win the weak. So simple. Paul was like this. He was preaching the gospel to every people. He said, I'm going to be probably whatever you're going to be so I can win you to Jesus, to win you to Yeshua, to win you to Yeshua. The hatred between both Jews and Arabs still exists until now. It's still there. In the Middle East and the Holy Land. The purpose in having intimacy with the Lord, to be satisfied in the Lord and to love one another as the Antichrist spirit is working everywhere in different levels. In Ephesians 2.14, for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. There is no walls, just Jesus is breaking the walls. He said, no walls. I don't want walls. Yeshua said it. I don't want walls. These two pictures I want to share. The first one, it's hard to see sometimes. But it's a Muslim background church in uh, Athens. And we serve uh, there with the ministry, Sukkot Hulel. It's a tent of praise ministry. It's 24 hours uh, seven days. The focus of this ministry is to strengthen the body of Christ, especially the houses of prayer, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray for every community. So we went and we had time of worship there in Arabic and Hebrew, in both languages, and it was really wonderful. We pray that more worship leaders will be sent out. We're having right now uh, three months internship, basically for the musicians to come be part of the house of prayer. You can just look into it if there is anyone is interested, uh, especially a musician. He can just email the ministry of Sukkot Hulel. Um, so God is moving in our area in different perspectives, different things. So we have to think out of the box. God is working globally. The area in conflict since Isaac and Ishmael spread out into the nations. Intimacy is the key to build the relationship with each other according to God's heart. Both hearts been wounded. Our heart is to have a relationship with Yeshua. Adon. Yeh vav he. I love it. Amen. He's not far. He's close to us. He's not away from us. He's in difficult situation with us. Yeah, he, vav, he. He's not far. I love, I love the, the, the Adonai Ru'i, Lo Ikhsar. It's Yeah, he, vav, he. I can't say to him, Adon. He's powerful. He's, he's, uh, he's listening. He's not God of stone. He listens. To our voices in the Middle East, we cry out. In Genesis 21, Ishmael cried out and he listened. The Lord listened to Ishmael. The third one, the desire for economic superiority brings war. Building the bridges brings peace. Jerusalem is the center of the universe. Jerusalem is the center of the universe. Every eye is looking into Jerusalem. 
Because Yeshua, Yeshua is going to come upon Jerusalem and every eye will see him. Every knee will bow down to him. Because he is the true prince of peace. He's the true prince of peace. People are searching for peace everywhere. People are searching to satisfy their own things and their own desires. But the Lord, Yeshua, is the prince of peace. Wars will not end. I don't believe that wars will end. There are lots of, you know, all of these relationship, the outside, I don't want to say much about bringing peace, bringing peace. But the true peace comes from the Prince of Peace. That's it. There is nothing. As believers, we have special peace that no other peace can be given. Only He is the Prince of Peace. There is a kid when I was serving in Jordan. I went to Jordan and served there and he was having like nightmares. Nightmares, imagine. And I just say to him, what's going on with you? You're waking up, freaking out every day. I said to him, I want to tell you something. Yeshua is the Prince of Peace. I lay my hand in him. And I say to him, the Prince of Peace will give you peace. And he slept very well. Why? Because he is the Prince of Peace. Jesus gave to his children peace. I was, another story, I was with a refugee walking with him four days, holding his hand in Turkey, in one of the camps. And he said to me, the final day, for the final fourth day, he said to me, Milad, I feel there is something different about you. Why you are so loving? And what's the point of coming to serve in the camp? And he said, I said to him, Yeshua is in me. Yeshua is in me. So the, the point is, is Yeshua is working in every community, in every people group. We pray for the Lord of the harvest to send out labors. There are many orphans in the Middle East, many Many uh, children, they're walking in the street. They don't know what to do. They don't have a future. The Lord changes the refugees' heart to forgive, encouraging them to walk with the Lord, supporting them spiritually is their need. The church in Athens that I was speaking about right now, um, they were saying, I want only spiritual need. We want spiritual need. How? want to teach them the gospel for three hours every day for a week. They want to hear the gospel. They want to listen. They're hungry to know the truth. They're like Muslim background believers and the Kurdish background believers. The Lord is shifting the Middle East to know Jesus. But he is sending them into Europe. And then I believe this is why we are called as believers in Israel to be a light for the world. Without Yeshua, we are not the light. We have to have a light. And the only light is Yeshua. I love this verse, James 1.27. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God. The Father is this. To visit orphans and widows in their affliction. And to keep oneself unstained from the world. I met a refugee uh, from Gaza. <laughs> Last week, he was in uh, Athens. It was not an easy story, how he came out from Gaza and to Athens. It's long details. But I wouldn't say that he is a believer now. Praise God. I asked him a question. I told him, I want to ask you a question. We would like to stand with you, to bless you. He said, thank you, but my God is my resource. You see what I mean? I said, okay, we are the family of Messiah standing with you. <laughs> so one of the things that those people who are coming from tough backgrounds, they know that God is their resource. 
they don't depend on other resource because God is their resource. We pray that the Lord will raise up fathers and mothers for the children in the Middle East. We pray that God will send up laborers into the Middle East. There are very few laborers. We are only 10,000 Christian believers in Israel and the Palestinian area. Only 10,000 now. We're very few. But the Lord is giving us to be a head, not a tail in this area. We thank the Lord for that, and we pray that will be like this, but will increase uh, in Jesus' name. We pray that will be increase. Um, in Revelation 21, 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Now we can see broken stories. One of the stories that it wasn't easy to hear during the refugee um, ministry mission thing. One came to me and she said, they put a track bomb, timing track bomb, into the sun, my son, and the car was bombed. And she was crying. Like, there are lots of brokenness in the community. Lots of um, instability in, uh, in Iraq. Now it's getting stable. In, in Israel and the Palestinian area is, is so confusing. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The people are wondering about the future. We know God is protecting us. But still, we are wondering about the future. So our joy is in Him. Our reward is in Him. Our peace is in Him. Our hope is in Him. So the hope for the Middle East is Yeshua. We pray that we'll stand firm in faith in these days. Because the battle is great. And it will be much more soon. But when you stick more to Yeshua, all of these things will calm down. Desiring God from all of your heart is really needed. There are very few people who are serving the Lord fully hearted. Not everyone serve the Lord is really serving Him in a fully hearted. I hope you understand what I mean in that. There are many people who are working in the ministries, big ministries, and suddenly you talk to this person, and then I don't know what's going on with this person's life. But there are people who are serving him with fully hearted, willing to die for the name of Yeshua. This is not easy. But Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is here to comfort us to the battlefield, following Jesus, Yeshua, being a peacemaker. Peacemaker, probably I'm a peacemaker between the Arabs and Jews, when Arabs and Jews get together. But those who are peacemakers will be walked on. But it's, it's wonderful to see the unity springing forth than just keeping talking. <laughs> divide, divide, divide. No, don't allow the division. We ask for God to unite his family because his family is his government. So bringing peace than war and bringing the truth in love is the true identity of Yeshua. So we pray for the next generation in the land to be healed. We pray that the older generation will have influence over the next generation so they will be healed. The next generation is rising up now to take the torch, to run. So please keep us in your prayers so we can let others, not only me, others who can go into the mission ground in the Middle East. One of the things that is really needed, to be honest with you guys, is the compassion of God.
into the next generation. When I ask them, hey guys, can you come to Middle East? Can you come to the Jordan? Can you come to Egypt? Can you come? Kind of, we have everything. You know what I mean in that? In Israel, we praise the Lord for the finance that has been pulled out. But one of the things that is lacking right now is the compassion of Yeshua, the compassion of Christ, the compassion for those who will not be perished. We want this passion. We can't go without the passion of Christ, the compassion of Jesus. It's really needed, and we are praying for that. Last week, we were praying, uh, last two weeks, because I'm in the state for, uh, for another five days. But the compassion is really needed. If you want to get the kid into going to the Jordan or into the mission field, he needs the compassion. And pray for the compassion. Pray that the Lord will send out labors. Because you can have labors, but you can't have compassion. But you can have compassion, but few are going to come. So thank you for your prayers. I think this is what I'm going to uh, speak about. Uh, I would like to have questions from you. Um, if there is anything into that, but I want to pray uh, before, if that's right. Uh, so let's just pray. Can you please stand up with me? Thank you. So, Yeshua, we come before you. We thank you for this message. Lord, thank you that you are working in every community, in every home group, in every society, in every uh, place, God. Thank you that you are beyond borders. Lord, would you bless the Itz Chaim synagogue? Lord, would you give Rabbi David wisdom and his family and all those who are working with him? Lord, would you uh, give us your compassion for the lost? Yes, Father, we ask you that you will pour out your spirit of compassion over the next generation in, in our land, God. We ask you for the compassion of Yeshua will spring forth in our societies, especially the believers. Lord, we pray for the laborers to be sent with compassion into the difficult, difficult places in the Middle East. Lord, we pray for the children in this uh, congregation, God, that you will bless it, you will keep it safe, you will keep the children safe wherever they go. Lord, I pray that the children will be light for every community. Lord, thank you for uh, it's Chaim, that they are welcoming me again. Lord, would you bless them? Would you keep them safe? And Lord, I pray that you bless them in abundance. Shem Yeshua. Shem Yeshua. Amen.